even if you're someone that doesn't like to shake things up, shake them up. Getting out of that comfort zone is the only way to let life in and to let those possibilities unfold, those synchronicities happen. Trust me, when you do it, magic happens. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another amazing episode of It's All Magic. How are you doing? How is your heart? How is your mind? How is your body? And how is your spirit? If you don't know, then fear not, because we are going to take a couple of deep breaths in just a moment. But I want to let you know that I'm really excited about today's episode. Today's episode is one of the main reasons why I started the podcast, more specifically, knowing that I could record this type of episode is the reason I started the podcast. One of my favorite podcasts has always been the style of podcasts where someone just sits down and shares from the heart. They share their life experiences and then are able to glean these nuggets of wisdom or spiritual lessons from those experiences. And so that is exactly what I will be doing today. So if you really enjoy the storytelling podcast, then you're in for a treat because I have quite the story to tell you. But also, if you like to tune in for some lessons and nuggets of wisdom here or there, you will also be in luck. But before we dive into the storytelling and lesson sharing today, I want us to do a few rounds of cyclic sighing. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. You might not be aware of cyclic sighing, but if you are a religious listener of It's All Magic, you know that we have done this a couple times on the show already. So the way that cyclic sighing works is that we're going to inhale through the nose twice. The first time you're going to inhale through the nose and really try to fill up your lungs, stretch out your diaphragm a little bit. And then when you feel like you can't even take in more air, you're going to inhale a second time through your nose and then we're going to sigh it out of the mouth. In a 2013 study, cyclic sighing actually beat out three other breathing and mindfulness techniques in its ability to heighten mood and lower respiratory rate. So it really is an incredibly simple but powerful tool to make us feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally. So I'd like us to do five rounds of cyclic sign today. And as always, if you would like to close your eyes right now, you can, and it's okay if you don't have the opportunity. So closing your eyes if possible and just getting comfortable into your seat. As I like to do, we're just going to start with one deep cleansing breath together before we do our five cyclic sign breaths. So go ahead and empty out from your previous breath here. And then when you're ready, inhale through the nose, filling up all the way. And open mouth, just let this go. And begin the cyclic sighing. Inhale through the nose. And again. Exhale out of the mouth. Round two, inhale through the nose. And again. Exhale out of the mouth. Round three, inhale, and again, 
exhale out of the mouth. And the fourth round, inhale. And again, exhale out of the mouth. Last one, make it the deepest and fullest yet. Inhale through the nose. And again, exhale out of the mouth. <sighs> Beautiful. Mm. Fluttering, open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. Oh, I hope that was nice for you. Every week when we sit down and do these breathing techniques, I'm always re-amazed at the power of the breath and how quickly it can change our moods and how quickly it can give us our self-awareness back. As I often talk about when we're going throughout our days and we are accomplishing things right and left or diving into this meeting and jumping into that meeting and heading to the grocery store, maybe picking up the kids, whatever it may be, we lose a sense of how we're doing. Because if we were consciously aware of how we're doing every second of the day, I mean, we just couldn't get anything done. <laughs> so I really enjoy coming back to those simple breaths even a few times a day to have a single moment where you check in and say, oh, hi, my heart. I forgot you're there, but thank you for beating. I hear you. I feel you. And I know that everything's going to be okay. So with that breathing behind us, I want to dive right into the story time. But in order to explain the story today, I first have to give you a little bit of a lesson, actually, a lesson that I have learned many times in my life and one that I think will be very helpful for many of you. The lesson is this. Sometimes, especially if you feel like you are in a rut or you're a little bored in life, a little restless, a little lost, sometimes you have to go outside of your day-to-day -day routine and do something different. <laughs> okay, I will explain this in depth, but one of the biggest lessons of the story that I'm going to tell you today is that it's actually really beneficial to shake things up sometimes. And I first heard about this technique a year ago. It was last February, and I was going through a phase of what's called ennui. Ennui is a French word that essentially means boredom and restlessness in life, kind of this slight discontentment, this slight discomfort, like yearning for more, not being sure what that is. We've all been there. And one of my friends who I saw during my phase of ennui, I said, man, have you ever heard of the term ennui? And she said, what is that? And when I explained it, she said, oh yeah, I just went through that. And I said, great, how did you solve it? I'm searching for a cure. And she said, honestly, I heard from one of my friends that they recommend taking one day where they do every single thing different. And I know for some of you routine followers, myself included, I do tend to have a pretty solid routine, especially when it comes to health and wellness. But I know that can be scary. And yet it's incredibly powerful because when we stay in the same routine day to day, we can actually cease growing. To a certain extent, we close ourselves off from all of the possibilities of the world, all of the potential synchronicities out there that are waiting for us. Because when we do the same things over and over, we're never outside of our comfort zone. We're never trying something new. We're never opening ourselves up to what could be. And so for my friend, she said that she actually took an entire week where she just threw out the rules that she had for herself. She shook up everything from her health routine to the way she was eating. And while routines can be extremely beneficial and can help us find stability and even progress in our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, if nothing was stable any day of the week, it would be really hard to make a million and one decisions every day. But for her, she decided, I will take one week to just be a different version of myself, to just try things differently. So I say all of this because recently, I actually have not been experiencing ennui. I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm uh, 
busy with the podcast, but also enjoying every moment of the journey and the challenge and connecting with you all. But because Cal and I are moving out of California very shortly, we decided that we finally wanted to check out the yoga studio that is one block from our house. Now, we have lived in this apartment for a year and a half, almost two years at this point, and there's literally a yoga studio a 30-second walk away. It's like a quarter of a block away. And yet, from the moment we moved in, we both thought, ah, I mean, fitness studios are expensive. We're feeling pretty good in kind of our at-home fitness routine. I mean, we have it locked and loaded. Like, we have our fitness routine down to a science. And so we just never tried it. And it's funny because we've even gone to some other yoga studios and other fitness studios. Very occasionally, we would kind of treat ourselves to a class. But it occurred to us the other day when we were walking by the studio, oh my goodness, they have this 30-day new student discount. We've never tried it. We have a little over a month left in California. Let's give it a shot. And so look at us. We went out of our typical routine and decided to shake things up. So we got this 30-day new student discount, and it has been one of the funnest things ever. We actually have said that it's as if we're in yoga camp because every night we will go onto the website to check out the schedule for the next day, and it's exciting. It's like, oh, what are the camp options for tomorrow? Like, which one do we want to go to? And we really are shaking up our, our routine. For example, typically after work, we will go for a long walk together where we share about our days, our deepest fears, our desires, our dreams, and then we cook dinner, eat dinner, get into bed, read, and then go to sleep. So we definitely have a simple, slow kind of homebody evening routine that feels really wonderful for us. But ever since we've started going to quote unquote yoga camp at the studio, we have been going to these evening classes that are deeply relaxing. So things like yin yoga, relaxation yoga, restoration yoga, and it's been incredibly beneficial for us. I mean, we then get home after that and it's like, wow, I am ready for bed. That class helped essentially turn off our minds, all of the mental chatter, and we just feel really well rested on a deep soul level. So the point is we've been really loving this experience. And even more than that, I I wanted to share this lesson because not only is it fun, beneficial, full of growth to go outside of your comfort zone, but I really do believe to a certain extent that's where the magic is. That's where the synchronicities are. So for me, I'll just give an example of one of the days that I recently had. So it was a Sunday morning and I walked myself over to the yoga studio for this. Actually, it wasn't a yoga class. It was kind of this dance slash strengthening, conditioning hit class. It was called Vibe Party or something, and it was magnificent. And I went alone because Cal is so not into that kind of fitness. And as soon as I got to the class, I started up a conversation with the girl next to me because why not? And so it was just another example of put yourself out there, do something different, talk to the person next to you, say hi to the lady that's at the checkout, uh, register at the grocery store. And so I started up this conversation with her and and we were talking about the class and I said, oh, this is actually my second class here. We just got the new student uh, discount and I'm really excited. And I just very briefly, I don't even know why I mentioned this, but I very briefly mentioned that, oh, in about a month, my husband and I are moving to Thailand. And <laughs> she said, oh my gosh, I have a Thai tattoo. I was like, what? And she showed me on her right shoulder this really cool, intricate tattoo. And she said it was done by a monk in Thailand. And then the instructor came in. He's like, okay, guys, like time to start the class. And I said, oh my gosh, I have to talk to you after class. And she said, absolutely. So her and I ended up having this amazing fitness class. And then afterwards, we talked all about Thailand and Bali. The reason we talked about Bali too is because 
that's where Cal and I went on our honeymoon and it was is just one of our favorite places on the planet and when I mentioned that she said oh my gosh I'm thinking about Bali for my honeymoon would you recommend it and so we just went back and forth about her trip to Thailand our experience in Bali and it was a really magical connection so that's one example of honestly that was a small synchronicity where I just happened to mention oh I'm moving to Thailand and she says I have a Thai tattoo and I absolutely loved Thailand so we had that connection and then later that evening Cal and I went back to the studio for a yin class and if you're new to yoga yin is this deeply restorative practice you're essentially holding these long stretching poses if you will for anywhere from two to six ish minutes so some of them are very uncomfortable but the point is that you're trying to actually not use your muscles so that you can stretch out the connective tissue the fascia etc there's a whole science to it but Cal and I went back for this kind of wind down class it was from 4 to 5 p.m. you know we didn't know the teacher all of this is new to us and the teacher instantly intrigued us when we walked in we could tell he was just a little eccentric and had kind of a kooky wild personality but something about him fascinated us and so at the end of the class I instantly went over to talk to him because he had even said in the middle of the class, if you're interested to learn more about why I have structured the class this way, because it was a very odd yin yoga structure. I had never seen anything like it. He said, feel free to come up to me after class. And so me being the curious soul that I am and also constantly seeking to go out of the ordinary and ask people things and just put myself out there in the world, I went up to him and I asked him about the class. And he also had been playing these sound bowls, these singing bowls that you've probably heard of throughout the class. And he had said that we could come up to them afterwards and play them ourselves. So of course I did that as well. Cal and I then proceeded to stay after class talking to this teacher for three hours Everyone else had left the studio. The lights had turned off. The three of us were sitting on the floor of this one yoga studio until 8 p.m. And the reason why we were talking so much is because he had been talking to this other woman while I was at the front of the room playing with one of the sound bowls, waiting in line to talk to him. He was talking to another woman about what she experienced in class. And she said, hey, you know, I have these certain areas that were almost oddly tense. And I just want your your opinion on maybe how I can continue to stretch that at home or whatever. And I overheard that he said, well, I'm actually a trained somatic therapist. So I work very closely with the body and being able to kind of interpret what the body is telling us when there are points of pain or tension, et cetera. And she was like, oh, really? And so he starts telling her about the right side versus the left side, which I'll get into shortly. And he's going really deep into what different parts of the body mean and what we can interpret their messages to be. And after he said that for a little bit, he said, also, I'm I'm sorry to um, interrupt this with a different topic, but I am actually clairvoyant and I'm seeing some images very strongly right now. Do you mind if I share them? She said, absolutely. And for those of you who don't know, clairvoyant means that you have clear sight. So you've probably heard the term psychic. Psychic is kind of a like a low grade term for the eight different clairs so it's called the the clairs clair comes from the word meaning clear there's clairvoyance clairsentience claircognizance clairsalience there's a lot of clairs and every one is a certain type of quote-unquote psychic ability so where clairvoyance is clear sight claircognizance is clear knowing that's kind of just our intuition telling us 
don't go down that alley. Something feels wrong or something bad is about to happen. That's clear cognizance. And there are many, many more. But he said, I'm clairvoyant and I'm seeing a lot of images. Do you mind if I share them? And she said, oh my gosh, please do. And he said, I see these seven women, these like purple women, dark skinned as you are standing here behind your right shoulder. And he was kind of seeing messages from them and she was clearly spooked in a positive way kind of in awe and she even said I know exactly who those seven are because he explained them I think three or four of them had long white hair and wrinkles the others didn't he could explain in detail everything about them and she said I know exactly who these women are they're my ancestors so they had this beautiful moment and as soon as I heard clairvoyant I'm thinking I'm staying. Cal and I have to talk to this guy. So Cal and I eventually went up to him and first to break the ice, I wanted to enter with a little conversation about the somatic therapy and the messages from the body. Granted, I was looking to go really deep with some of these messages. I mean, if he was willing to do a free clairvoyant reading for me, I was down for it. But I obviously wanted to be respectful and just wanted to ask about the class as well. So Cal and I went up and I proceeded to explain that I have a pretty intense, I guess, tightness, um, pretty intense tightness in my right hip flexor. In fact, every time I run about 20 minutes in, to a T like every single time 20 minutes in my right hip flexor starts screaming at me and I pretty much have to stop running I also have had some issues with my right wrist for a few years so it's a lot on the right side and he proceeded to explain and I've heard this in many different books podcasts modalities spiritualities but the right side is symbolized by the masculine and by giving. The left side is symbolized by the feminine and receiving. If this is the first time that you're hearing about feminine and masculine energy, I can break it down a little bit. So we all have feminine and masculine energy within all of us. And in fact, it's not always tied to gender. So you can have a man that has a lot of feminine energy and a woman that has a lot of masculine energy. And I really believe that one of our goals, one of our lessons in life is to learn to balance those energies a little bit. Find that yin and yang happiness, that harmony, that balance. And so for me, when I started talking to him, he instantly had images come to him as well. And he said, you are so off balance. You are 80% masculine, 20% feminine. And what's so crazy about that is that I know that. (laughs) I've known that for a long time. And right before the new year of this year, Cal and I had gone on a long walk and we had a long discussion about masculine energy and feminine energy. And I said, I really want to work on rejuvenating my feminine energy side this year because my masculine has been in overdrive for far too long. So the difference between feminine and masculine, I also invite you to Google this or look it up on YouTube. There are lots of great explanations, but masculine is symbolized by hard work, structure, routine, pushing, just getting it done, sticking with it, stability. And it's, even as I'm saying it, it's this very almost military energy. I'm clicking, that might be annoying, but it's this very angular, hard, masculine energy. And then feminine energy is very soft, fluid, flowing, more spontaneous, less planned, more intuitive, more emotional. So more inward, and that masculine energy is more outward, always trying to grow, to work, to push, to accomplish. And that feminine is more nurturing, but also this sense of deeper knowing and trust and faith that's very feminine. In fact, in 
pretty much every religion I've ever studied, there's a belief that women are far more connected to God, to the universe, to intuition because of that feminine energy. Of course, as I mentioned, not all women are feminine, not all men are masculine. But that feminine energy is the essence of connection with something greater than us. And so by me being more in my masculine, that is very much me pushing on the days when I'm exhausted. If I had a more feminine approach, which I thoroughly believe in and want to continue to cultivate in my own life, on the days where I'm exhausted, I would actually cater to that. I would say, wow, for example, okay, I'm on my period, I'm exhausted, I have brain fog, I'm hungry, I didn't sleep well last night, I'm actually going to let myself nap for 30 minutes and see how I feel after. Or I'm going to change up my workout routine to do kind of a light Pilates instead of the strength training I was going to do. And that's actually something I've learned throughout my life. I've become a lot more self-nurturing and intuitive with some of those health habits, including workout routine. In fact, I try to kind of time it throughout my menstrual cycle these days, and it's really beneficial. Um, Quick tip on that. If you do workouts that are too intense on your menstrual cycle, it actually does far more harm than good. And you're actually likely to gain weight from it rather than either maintain or lose weight, whatever your goal is. So it's really important to listen to your body and cater to what it's asking for. One other thing I'll say about masculine and feminine energy, just the menstrual cycle made me think of this. But when we look at men's hormonal cycles, They go pretty much in 24-hour periods. So a man's hormones are more or less the same day to day. Women's hormonal cycles are more or less on a 28-day cycle. So every single day of the month, our bodies, our moods, our minds are completely in a different place. And therefore, they demand different things. And so that's also why that feminine approach of tuning in each day and seeing what I need as opposed to the masculine approach would be sticking to the routine or sticking to the rules just because that's the way it is, even if it's actually harming your body. Another example is, let's not use the menstrual cycle. Let's say there's a man who is sick, if he is sick, I'm saying sick, not mentally, but like he's ill, he has a cold, a flu or something, it's actually better for the body to be a little gentler. So maybe if he can get more in touch with that feminine energy, he chooses to go for a walk that day instead of go to CrossFit like he usually does on Tuesdays. So for all of us, it's about finding that balance between the right side, the left side, the giving, the receiving, the masculine, the feminine, the action, the intuition, the doing versus the emotions. There's this beautiful harmony that we can all find. And this yoga teacher, who's also the somatic therapist, said that he sees in so many of his clients very clearly which side has taken over and which side is calling to be called on more. And he even said to me, wow, I see this 80-20 imbalance in you, way more masculine energy than feminine energy. And your right side is kind of pissed. Like, woman, don't you have a left side? (laughs) And so we talked about that for a little. And once everyone had left, he actually said, this is going to be a deeper conversation. Do you mind if we, if the three of us sit down? And so we sit down with him and he does proceed to give us essentially this three hour reading. I mean, we're asking questions, we're talking to him, we're laughing. It was so magical. But even on the take of masculine versus feminine energy, after he had said to me, I had this 80-20 split, he also had told Cal, by the way, that he had this imbalance, but not 
as strongly as mine. I actually have more imbalance towards my masculinity or my masculine side and Cal's is more of this 70-30. And uh, he said that Cal can help kind of nurture my feminine energy and I can help him nurture his masculine energy. So it's this really beautiful dynamic we have. But when we sat down, he looked at me and he said, you have this really strong, powerful, fierce, like Viking warrior energy, which for those of you listening might not believe it because I am quote unquote all sunshine and rainbows, but I do have this inner fierceness, this fighter, this warrior, like ready to take on a cause and make the world better. And I believe so strongly and passionately And so it was funny that he said, I can really see that. He said, you should go home and look up the Norse goddess Freya because I'm seeing a lot of her energy kind of swirling around you. So I went home and I looked up Freya and she is a bad ass. She is so cool. She has this long blonde hair, blue eyes, but she is fierce. Like you would not cross Freya. So I loved hearing that. And then he kind of zoned out for a second, which we came to learn was him seeing images. And he said, whoa, I've never seen something so powerful and fierce, but I am getting this very clear image. There are 17 powerful women surrounding you right now. And he said, actually, they're with you all the time, but they are kind of showing me that you can communicate with them to ask even how you can cultivate that feminine energy. They want you to stop being so in that masculine side and find a little bit more balance. But he said this, he started calling it the Council of 17. And now when we message, he calls me Queen of the Council of the 17. He said this Council of 17 is made up of warriors he said i'm seeing a lot of witches shamans alchemists and curanderas curanderas are these latin american uh healer people that use folk remedies and little tidbit on that which is crazy if you are a religious listener of it's all magic you've probably heard my episode about my past life regression where i had this clear vision of my lifetime as a Peruvian woman that was deeply connected to nature and my spirituality. And I didn't get into all the details of if I was a curandera, but he said that three of the 17 were these Peruvian curanderas. So he said he'd never seen such a mix of healer and fighter before. (laughs) And I just couldn't help but laugh because it's like, oh, I feel so seen. (laughs) So that was really beautiful. We talked about that a little bit. And I'll also make a note here that he said the name of one of the women in my council of 17. She said her name to him. And as soon as he said it out loud, I'm not going to say it here. Cal and I looked at each other like we had this very weird intuitive feeling of either we know this person or she's our future daughter. I I can't even explain it here because we then talked about it for a while after and we've never met anyone with that name. It's a very unique name. It's really beautiful, but something about it felt familiar. Like we know her. So we added that to our future baby names list. And then the yoga teacher turned to Cal and told him some beautiful things too. He said that Cal's energy is very much that of a tree. And we started laughing because I have called him my tree man for years. We would always say that I am the sun, I'm up in the sky, always very buoyant, always ascending, learning, laughing. And he is this stable, grounding tree force in my life. He feels most at home when he's playing with insects and looking at redwoods and he's deep in the shade of a redwood grove. 
that is his soul's home. And here was this guy saying, you are literally a tree. In fact, he brought up the movie Avatar and he said, oh, have you seen Avatar? And we said, oh, we love it. And he looked to Cal and he said, no wonder you were essentially watching yourself. You are like that tree. I think her name is Ewa, like this old, stable, sturdy, wise tree. And he said that Cal, this is kind of his quote. He said, Cal was made to land and Devin was made to fly. And that we can help balance each other out because if Cal just lands, he goes deeper and deeper into the ground, becomes more and more stable. If I continue to just fly, I fly off into the cosmos, but my feet have left the earth. And that that uh, feeling is one that is quite familiar to me. <laughs> and so he talked about the ways in which we can balance that 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 energy out where Cal can bring me back down to earth and I can help him rise. And what's fascinating about this guy is that he's also a family and marriage therapist. And so we had a lot of conversations about our relationship and he would bring up things that he was seeing just in our communication. He would bring up images he was seeing. It was really incredible. And towards the end of the conversation, we mentioned to him that we're moving to Thailand and he got the biggest smile on his face and he said, you two have been there before. The jungle is going to be so good for you. And I said, it's so interesting that you say jungle because for a lot of people, when they think of Thailand, they think of beaches. But Cal and I are not going for the beach. We're actually not huge beach people but we are definitely forest people, jungle people. And what's even weirder is that recently I've had numerous experiences of having clear visions of me in the jungle. And I don't think I've ever even been to a jungle. So this is very odd. And he said that, he said, yes, these are these are messages. Like you two are meant to be in the jungle. And when you are in Thailand, in the jungle, Cal will remember his tree nature and feel comfortable and confident being his spiritual, wise, stable, Awa-like nature. And Devin, you will remember that you are wild, that you are untamable. You were meant to break free and forge your own path. And so it was just this beautiful, beautiful situation. And finally, it was... 8 p.m. and we said oh my gosh we should probably all get home it's a Sunday night Cal and I were starving I'm sure this yoga teacher was too but it was such a cool experience and there were even these small moments of jaw-dropping realizations for example uh, at one point maybe two hours in Cal had left left to go to the bathroom and all of the lights at that point in the entire studio had turned off because they were motion censored and we had just been sitting on the floor for three hours and there was no one else in the studio. So when Cal left, came back, the lights actually stayed off. And then I said, oh my gosh, I really have to go to the bathroom. So I left, went to the bathroom and when I came back in, the lights turned back on. And he looked at me and he said, you are the sun. (laughs) He said, you bring light, you bring ascension. And I just started laughing like that's crazy. And then later, uh, I think we were talking about, oh, we were talking about kind of a heavier topic, ways in which I feel really weighed down or really challenged. And in the middle of me talking about that, the lights went off. And he looked at me and he said, there's no such thing as a coincidence. That was not a coincidence. When you came in and we were talking about light, joyful topics, you brought the light, you brought brought the sunshine. And then as soon as we talked about something challenging, it dimmed the lights. So there were so many crazy experiences that night. I'm not going to go into too much more depth. Just know that my journal pages are filled to the brim with a whole lot of bullet points about that evening, as is Cal's. But the point of this entire episode 
is not even to share a story about having this clairvoyant experience with some random yoga teacher on a Sunday evening and being open to it, but it's really the reminder to shake up your routine every once in a while. Go out of your way to let life in. Allow those possibilities to happen. And you can only allow them to happen when you go out of your way to talk to your barista at Starbucks or stay after class for yoga to ask a question or try out the singing bowls that they have up at the front. Or maybe it means checking out a fitness studio that you've never been to or going to a different part of town. So even if you are someone that doesn't love to travel and experience new cultures and languages and cuisines, that's okay. But within your own local community, shake things up. Even if you're someone that doesn't like to shake things up, shake them up. (laughs) Because getting out of that comfort zone is the only way to let life in and to let those possibilities unfold, those synchronicities happen. Trust me, when you do it, magic happens. So that is my semi-random, semi-impromptu episode for this week. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please feel free to share it with a family member or a friend. It really helps to spread the love of the podcast and it would mean the world to me. Until next week, I am sending you all light, love, sunshine, rainbows, and everything good in life. I adore you all. I thank you all for listening. And until I see you again, (laughs) bye for now. Bye.